Winter cut day 41, bicep back and forearm day. We are on day six of chicken only. So nothing but chicken so far in this diet. I might implement things like butter. Um, the moment I'm just having chicken and maybe some olive oil or whatever. And then uh, with the exception of protein shakes is the only additive I'm having in my diet because it just makes it a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, today I, I got pretty low sleep and I woke up naturally, which was weird. Uh, so it is what it is, but I'm losing weight rapidly. Today's weigh-in was 159. I was 161.8 um, just a few days ago. So excited to see what happens with this. I want to shock people. I don't just want to cut to the point where people go, oh yeah, that's a normal cut. I do want to get a little bit leaner than that for sure. And I definitely am not going to put a number on it as a stopping point because I oftentimes think that people rob their progress by uh, putting a stopping point way too soon in their cut. I think that when you're cutting, you need to cut until you're lean enough, all right? And that is not a subjective thing. In my opinion, that is an objective thing. And you'll go based off of how your body feels, all right? Not based off of how you feel about the cut, but based off of how your body feels. If your body starts giving you feedback saying, hey, it hurts to walk, you know, our feet don't have fat on them, or your body goes, bro, we've been getting three hours of sleep every night. What are you doing? You need to start eating again. You should have probably been eating a while ago, right? But those are symptoms of getting shredded, like totally diced, peeled to the bone. All right, that's a shredded type symptom. The, what I plan on is cutting until I experience one of those, okay? I don't know what it would be. And I'm not planning on it being the worst thing ever, by the way. But what I am saying is, I'm cutting until my body gives me feedback to stop. So this could be in a while from now, guys. And uh, I think it's going to be around probably the six-week mark, if I had to take a well-educated guess. So we have whey protein, we have creatine, and I do have to get liquid IV to hydrate properly. But I'm thinking, guys, once I am fully shredded and cut, I'm going to carb up like you would for a show. All right, I don't want to say fully shredded, but fully lean. I'm, I'm going to carb up like you would for a show and get some L-citrulline in my system and maybe take a couple few cool videos or something. I don't know because, well, I don't think I'm going to take a couple cool videos. I'm just going to make sure that my physique looks pretty cool for the videos that I will take at that point. And I mean, by then, man, hopefully I get some recognition because I honestly think I'm at the point where my physique is starting to look pretty good. And especially once I'm very lean, people will start to see uh, how actually good my physique looks. Like, I don't know, I think I'll be, I'll be pretty aesthetic looking, I'll be up there among some of the guys with bigger followings at that point. I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't be. It's just a matter of, you do have to be very diligent and consistent with reels and posts. I've tried to post every time I do a workout. I think I need to post more often though. Maybe release two sets of pictures from my workout. And then also, uh, I'm trying to now, as of today, post reels every day because I was posting reels every day for a while and lower quality videos of mine were actually getting loads of engagement compared to the higher quality videos that I'm putting out now, which are getting little amounts of engagement on every single platform. So, you know, the shorts, the reels, the TikToks, all that. Uh, I do need to post every day, maybe even multiple times a day if I have time. But it is definitely at this point getting hard to find time to do those things because my entire day at this point is recording, <clears throat> editing, and uh, doing things that pertain to my uh, bodybuilding journey. And, you know, I do need to find time to fit in some other things. So, yeah, I definitely need to make more reels and stuff for you guys. I think one thing that's kind of an unspoken rule about the cut, you got to have you got to have an electrolyte drink, all right? If you're not having an electrolyte drink, you're a goof. Straight up. Because you're depleting your body of everything it needs. So that way you can lose boatloads of fat. Meanwhile, 
you're sitting here not drinking electrolytes when they don't even have calories. So get yourself a liquid IV. I think it has like 45 calories or something. That's just from the sugar and whatnot. But you need yourself a liquid IV. Treat yourself to one. Trust me, it's, it's worth the 45 calories. I've debated with some people on implementing things in their diet that are literally like 40 calories or this, and they're like, oh, bro, I can't. Dude, your cut's too strict then, and this is coming from the guy who's eating 800 calories a day with cardio, okay? Uh, and also, to speak on that, I'll say this. Uh, I think, despite the fact that this is a really aggressive cut, since, since it's not really lasting long at all, I'm pretty sure uh, by the end of it, I'll have a ton of muscle. I, I seriously can't imagine, I can't imagine a world where I'm losing muscle. So, in terms of like legitimate big amounts, I think I've already lost, I think I've already lost the muscle that I'm going to lose. I don't think I'm going to lose much more than I already have because obviously when you're cutting and you're like in a perma cut like I am, you know, I lost 30 pounds before I even started making these videos, rebounded a little bit, make the videos, blah, 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 you get it. <clears throat> and it's just been a fluctuation back and forth, but I'm like, this is the once and for all, you know, we're going to treat this like it's a serious big deal. We're going to be disciplined, consistent, and commit to the cut. So I'll say this to you guys. If you are going to events frequently, let's say, with lots of food, all right, whether it's restaurant with your family, whether it's you're a little kid and you got some sort of group you go to, you get pizza there or whatever, or you know, you got freaking friends you hang out with and they're like, oh bro, you know, let's let's just go out, man. Let's eat or drink or do this or that. Bro, those calories ain't worth it, man. If you're on the cut, you're going to be in a perma cut. You're not taking it, you seriously, you're not taking the cut seriously if you were doing, if you're doing any sort of unnecessary calorie expenditure uh, that is beyond a, you know a few hundred a day okay because and that's pretty graceful I you could have I mean some of you on the 1500 calorie diet I'm realizing just how much you can eat on 1500 because guess what I'm eating 800 with cardio and you know some days I'll have 900 or close to a thousand but for the most part I'm been doing 800 and dude I'll tell you this uh I don't feel super hungry all the time like most people would think. I don't feel hungry at all. In fact, the cravings I get aren't even that strong. But the moral of the story is I needed something more strict to adhere to because 1,500 calories was just too loose for me. I would start up on my you know, 1,500th calorie and realize that I'd binged through, at the time, it was cookie dough. And then it was this, and it was that, talkies, and snacks, and chips. And I actually just, it was enough calories for me to make myself hungrier than I actually was. Where uh, it was like a, it was like the perfect balanced artificial state of hunger that I put myself in. Whereas this diet, right now, do I feel a little bit less like mentally clear? Yeah. Like I feel like whenever I was eating, um, Maintenance, actually, I felt the best in my body. I just felt the best at maintenance. When I was bulking, I actually had, you know, a little bit of just like, I kind of felt silly, just dumb a little bit. Uh, there, there would be times where I would be eating so much, I just would just, oh, you know, I'd sit back in my chair and just lay there for like a while, man. But that's kind of what happens whenever you're bulking or doing extreme dieting. You get odd levels of lethargy from different things. So I am massively procrastinating my creatine right now, but I got to have it. We got half the shakedown. Now guys, a good strategy when you're cutting is to bring about a tablespoon of melted butter in your pocket. Just bring it everywhere with you. 
Because if you do this, and then you start eating it, like I have it in a, in a Ziploc, like lunch, those little lunch bags, I'll take it out of my pocket. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of open a little part of the Ziploc and I'll squeeze it into my mouth intraset. And what that'll do is that'll refuel your testosterone for future... Nah, no, I'm just making all this up. All right, boys, I will see you after... You guys are going to see me with a whole different look after this cut. All right, boys, new haircut. What do we got? What do we got? Anyway, uh, we have a protein shake here. We're going to finish the latter half of the protein shake from earlier. And we got to zip off the gym bag. I was going to try to, like, get some cool, like, I don't know, like, B-roll footage or whatever, just me, like, zipping it up, but I'm like, I don't know, it's kind of dumb. So, anyway, I'm going to drink this protein shake. Boys, we're gonna start with single arm dumbbell preacher curls. Let's go! Oh, almost threw it at my face. Douche! Douche! Pause at the forehead. Douche! Douche! Day six of the chicken only diet, boys. Power. <laughs> Name one person who can move 35 like that. I mean, a lot of people can. All right. <sighs> What's good homies, this is Copyright Max here, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a voiceover because I did just upload this video, and I usually put them out on the schedule in advance, and it informed me that before the video actually gets posted, I had six different copyright claims on this video, which makes sense because I had some pretty epic tunes in here, so... Yeah, um, just wanted to mention that I did in fact hit a PR this set, this is, this is... Way after I made this video, by the way. This is, like, pretty late at night. And, uh, yeah, I can absolutely verify. I believe this was about nine reps. So, I counted it twice earlier. I don't I don't think I counted it again. But, yeah, I think it was about nine reps. So, pretty cool stuff. Okay, boys, so intraset story time. I literally thought I tore my bicep because I felt a pop, okay, in my left arm. And it wasn't painful, but it was a pretty, like, weird pop. And then I was flexing, bro. I'll play the clip. I was flexing, and dude, uh, the shadow, because I didn't have my glasses on, and I was looking pretty far in the mirror. The shadow cast on my bicep at a certain angle, and I literally thought, I literally thought I tore my bicep, it was the freakiest thing. I see. Ah. Day six, chicken only, Luke. Chicken only for six days now.
voiceover max is making an appearance again and boys i gotta admit i don't have a whole lot to say this time around other than the fact that these hammer curls went pretty well and uh i think what i'm gonna do is just put intermittent explosions at random so that way the viewer is both shocked surprised and has something to look forward to for the next couple minutes All right, boys, we're doing ultra-wide grip pull-ups, and I got to say, I absolutely hate the way these feel on my shoulders, so I don't intend on really ever doing them again, uh, at least in this manner. Uh, I, I don't like the camera and the bar and uh, the angle that they have it at in this gym, so it's just kind of weird. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the... Uh, I'm not a big fan of a pull-up bar shape this way to begin with. I, I don't know why. It just doesn't agree with my shoulders, but... Uh, yeah, I just much prefer a straight bar, so I just kind of skipped this pretty quick. And uh, in the video, I said, oh, yeah, like, that sucked, blah, 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 move on to posing. Now, honestly, guys, I said this in at some point in the video, but this is probably my best physique yet, and there's a whole lot more where this came from. It's going to be way better in the next six weeks, especially towards the end. And when we carve up, when we have a good time, when we eat, we're happy. And when we get to bulk again, man, I'm just so excited to bulk again. But I do think I'm going to appreciate this cut in the process that is the cut. I just think, though, that something else to consider when cutting is that it's way more sacrifice required than bulking. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about my physique again right now. I gotta say, that might not translate to the camera, but I know the mirror in line of it. I look very, very good. Definitely the best I've ever looked at my again, so. You guessed it, the star of the show is back, Copyright Max, and today we are staring at my behind, doing some barbell rows, and I gotta say, my back looks really freaking cool here, I got that Cobra thing going on, and despite the fact that I did not enjoy these at all, uh, I definitely tried to get in the groove, tried to train really hard, but still just didn't really like these that much, so... I see a shoulder vein, oh my gosh. I don't know if it's caught on camera, but I'm just more vascular and striation-y.
right, boys. So if I didn't mention it already, we are doing wrist curls. Heavy. I'm going to go for five reps. I'm taking it easy today, that's it for me. I'm gonna just go right to my cardio and, yeah. Just a 2.2 speed, 15 incline max out treadmill. The goal of this isn't to go and run super hard. We're doing this step where we can burn calories. We're not doing this to get amazing cardio, so yeah. We have a perfect nine ounces of chicken breast with some extra seasoning and some seasoning on the side, oven baked. And I'm going to enjoy this while I sit by the fire. I enjoyed myself greatly. The chicken was incredible. My mom is the best cook, better than you all by far, and uh, there's no debate about that. Now, with the exclusion of the fact that uh, now with that said, I'm particularly tired. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, and I'm just now eating my first meal. I may or may not have more chicken later. I'm not sure. Just depends on how things go. But uh, also may have a diet jello. I haven't been eating them, but I always say that just in case. I've had one and I put whipped cream on it, which was wonderful for about 25 calories total for the whole dessert. And that was really good. I do have a Diet 7 up in the fridge. Gonna wait till that thing gets really cold and drink it and excuse me and enjoy it. And yeah. Other than that, I will report to you on how the back day went. So bicep preacher curls went incredible. I uh I really enjoyed them. I don't even remember if I hit a PR. But I really enjoyed them. I think I maintained. Just about where I wanted to on both arms. And uh, the form was better. It was incredible. I was able to pause in the most stretched position, which was nice. Then moving on to barbell rows. Sorry, no, actually, I think I did wide grip pull-ups. I really hated those, to be honest. They didn't agree with my anatomy at all, and both my shoulders crunched like crazy. So I was like, you know what, we're not going to do this. I did one set of that, not even a failure. I was like, I, I, I'm not going to do that. And uh, then I moved on to barbell rows. Didn't like those. Really hated those. Now, if you like them, that's fine. Some people like different exercises. But didn't enjoy them. I didn't really feel like they were right for my anatomy. And I just felt... Like, my lats were not doing nearly as much work as they could, which, I mean, is further proved by the fact that immediately after barbell rowing to failure, uh, well, not immediately after, but after barbell rowing to failure, I was able to go and chest-supported dumbbell row the 80s, doing way more weight than I was on the barbell. So the chest support makes a big difference, and you can definitely, I, I see why people always talk about uh, how important motor unit recruitment is and everything because you're you're not going to get good activation or good force production through the muscle and you're not going to be able to grow it if you're not in a stable environment so not to say that barbell rows or anything that's not stable uh doesn't work but things that are stable work better 
So, didn't like those, but they did feel all right. Uh, then moving on to the dumbbell rows, you know, chest supported. Those were incredible as always. I enjoyed them. They're a staple if I don't have a T-bar. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, and then wrist curls actually went really well. Uh, the chalk worked better than expected. And it made it to where the dumbbell didn't really slip out of my hand like usual. So I can foresee that helping some PRs in the future. And uh, after that, cardio was excellent. Uh, wasn't crazy like I thought it would be. I didn't burn like 400 calories or anything because for whatever reason, I just didn't really feel like walking. Uh, I only burned, the machine said 230, which means I probably burned like 150 to 170. So still more than normal. Um, but yeah, it all went really well in my opinion. I enjoyed it. If you guys want what I'm wearing in the video today or something like it, Go to PRLifestyle.com, link in bio, and use my code MAXWELL15. Feel free to also go to Get Raw Nutrition, link in bio, for any sort of supplements. They have excellent supplements, and you can use code MSHARKY996. I buy my creatine from them. Uh, they also have pre-workouts, too, that are pretty nice. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you tomorrow for leg day.